It looks like an ordinary day in the USA, but in the city of Flint, Michigan, all is excitement. Mark you well this day in American progress, as down from aloft swings the golden body of a car that's been 46 years in the making. A car that marks a proud feat of the teamwork of American productive achievement, unmatched anywhere at any time. The manufacture by the people of one company of 50 million motor cars. This used to be a General Motors, all General Motors town. People came from the south and they got jobs in the factory. You know, Flint used to be a booming town. I raised a family of four children and one grandson. We needed a second income, so I started working. Got married, um, had five children, and went back to work. Um, uh, after being married 10 years. When I started in the shop, like I said, at 19, um, that was the best paying job around, you know, considering that I didn't have, you know, the college experience at that time. I was an inspector on an assembly line. I assembled the uh, parts that went into the uh, cruise control. You know, back when I was in high school, not too many girls went to college. I mean, unless you were going to be a nurse or a teacher, on weekends, I would wait tables on Thursdays, Friday and Saturday. I did bar work, mixing drinks, mingling with customers, just trying to make ends meet. The work presented here today Untitled Women's Work is dance-based research into the lived experience of eight senior women living, working and retiring in the Flint and Detroit areas. I was 19. I had some schooling. I, there was times, was 19. I wished I wasn't working. At that working. time, that was the best job around. I didn't. I didn't think women should work in the shop back then. I thought it was a man's job. And after, especially after I started raising my grandson. With the benefits. Back in that time, I wish your family could get you in the shop. The head. In between layoffs, I always wanted to carry on my education. I really didn't want to be there. I wanted to be at home. Then I got thinking about retirement so late in my life. I went to the shop. I was in my late 30s by then. For example, one job consisted of putting the oil pan on, I thought it was and it was monotonous. Then I went to the body shop, and I did well. I had these burn marks in my blouse and in my bra, but I needed it all the time while the line was moving. Hard. They're all grown now. I get emotional. Third shift you go and I try to get off at 6 a.m. That was the shift I preferred. 
In the last five years, I was studying on the third shift because it worked better for me and my family. Okay. I wish I could stay. Experience is written on our bodies. As we researched, listened to the voices, our personal experiences made us notice themes in the women's stories. The worker, self, attempts to engage with the work institution in terms of her larger life. The work institution engages in terms of its economic goals. The work institution, job, starts to shape the worker and at the same time she impacts on the work institution through how she yields. The voices, data, take on a life of their own. More than words, the themes weave in and out of each other, make connections we don't expect. A theme emerges, rhythms. Within the relationship, the worker, self, has her own rhythm, her life. There seems to be a power structure where the better the job, the more able she is to be in her own rhythm. Maintaining her rhythm is part of what motivates her, keeps her going, while work becomes an obstacle to her sustaining her rhythm. with the suggestion of a good job. Relationships and rhythms woven together, but not lost in each other. It wasn't hard to retire because I was ready to retire and be home. I had a lot of things to do, you know, like enjoy the grandbabies and I like traveling. I didn't travel often, but when I got a chance, I did. I had uh, two husbands when I was young and, and none of them, they didn't want to support anybody help me so I just told him to get out you know and I did it on my own never got any child support nothing when I left um, I was told by the employees that were still there a lot of the guys 
that um, it took two people to do the same job that I did. So that made me feel good. It gave me a lot of confidence. You know, I think each, 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 each position that I had, I, I learned a little bit more. It becomes like family, you know, and then when you leave, it's like, you know, I've worked with so many people over the years and lots of good people. Some I'd like to see again, some I wouldn't, but, but most of them are good people. Well, I like most jobs because I like, um, I like interacting with the people. You know, you meet a lot of different people and, uh, you get to talk, you get to move around, you don't just sit in one place. That's why I enjoy it. I think um, you can adjust to just about anything you have to do. And it, it wasn't bad, but you know, if you don't have to work on an assembly line, if you work on a job that's um, outside the area of uh, assembly, you work at your own speed that's much better. Even though you're working fast, you're still controlling the speed, where you have no control over the speed of the parts coming down the assembly line. So yeah, we learn from our experiences, learn from our mistakes. You know, everybody back then, a lot of days, you know, we probably did silly things, said silly things. And, but yes, now um, those experiences are what makes me who I am today. Like what?